Hey everybody, it's time for another ServiceNow Toolbox. My name is Robert Fedorik. It is so good to have you here. In this episode, we are going to be taking a deep dive on system properties. Now, if you've never used system properties, you can think of them as facts that determine how different applications in ServiceNow work. If you've ever added an attachment in ServiceNow, you've already engaged with how system properties work because it's system properties that tells ServiceNow what the maximum file size attachment is and what file types that you're allowed to upload in the first place. Now you know a sys property helps determine how an application behaves, but there's two important things that you should also remember about system properties. Number one is that it frees you from the need to hard code any thing into any of the scripts you write across the platform. We've all been in situations where it's like, and then the task goes to this group that's in a business rule. So you're hard coding a sys ID. If you're ever in the feeling where you're hard coding a value and you think maybe there's a, even the slightest possibility that this value might change in the future, don't hard code the value into the script, make a system property and then reference that system property with the script. So if you're using system properties to your advantage, no more hard coding values in scripts. And the last thing I want you to keep in mind for sys properties is that it helps you distribute administrative load. Imagine you make a custom app for somebody and the process owner has a bunch of options for the app. Well, it might work this way. We might wanna shut this on or off. We might wanna have default values here, here, and here. Well, if those are gonna change at any time, you can take all those sys properties and you can allow people of other roles to write to them. So it's not strictly a system admin thing to modify. So in review, the three points, system properties, help you determine how applications work, allow you to do less hard coding in your scripts, and allow you to distribute some of the administrative load. We already talked about attachments, let's cover a couple other examples. This is the incident management properties. Have you ever wondered why incidents auto-close after a certain number of days in the resolve state? It's because of a system property. By default, it's seven. You can change it to whatever you want. Likewise, you can control whether the incident tasks get closed whenever the parent incident is closed. You see, these are different behaviors that different customers might want a say in. And so they make the switch via a system property. Another example you may have come across if you're an admin is email configuration properties. Whether or not your email send receive is on, which address all of the emails go to for a given instance, whether or not you're adding invisible watermarks to the email and the number of journal entries you're going to send if you add the comments or work notes to an email all governed by system properties because they are all configurations that might change in the future and you want to control how that app behaves. Okay, let's think of some other ideas that I haven't been able to display. Think about default groups for assignment, escalation groups, owners for the application, whether or not you want a certain function to work, endpoints for integrations, retry intervals for integrations that fail in their messaging, thresholds for various measures, and the number of days until something else happens. Okay, I have this application on my PDI called Things, and they're just really basic tasks. They track number, priority state, short description, and I have a custom field called Score. And let's add some system properties. So I, I might wanna have a whole bunch of workflows for things, and I always want things to be assigned to the thing processing group. And I always want the escalations of things to go to the thing escalation group. Okay, so I already have two properties in mind. And I'm also going to play around with the idea of having score thresholds. So I may want to have code around whether or not anything has exceeded a certain score. Now, these are all things I'm imagining that are going to be in business rules and workflows all over the platform, but let's get them into sys properties so we can reference them no matter what their values are. So to do that, you go to sysproperties.list. This brings you to a list of all the system properties and we're gonna create new. Here we are on a new sys property. It's going to ask us for a suffix. Now this is because I am inside a scoped application already, my things application. If you're doing this in global, you would just have to provide a name. There's lots of thought out there about good naming conventions. I personally like Jace Benson's naming convention of company process function. Uh, in this case, my app kind of is the process. So I'm gonna say default.assignment. Now it automatically makes the name for me because it's gonna put my application prefix ahead of this. Again, if you're doing this in global, all you have to worry about is the name. Now, descriptions are super important in this context because later when we teach you how to make these properties available for other people to see, it's the description that is going to be the label for the property. 
I'm adding this description that this will be used to automatically assign things from Flow Designer. Choices is a comma delimited list of strings if your type is choice. And this blends nicely into the different types of system properties. You have everything from choice lists to colors, dates, images, integers, strings, time zones, true, false, not as wide an option as say fields, but still a strong list of system property types. I'm going to use string for most of this and I'm gonna put a value of this. This is the sys ID of the assignment group that I want to be the default. There's a few other properties you wanna be on the lookout for. There is this property ignore cache, being super real with you here. I'm not entirely sure the significance of this. It's true by default. I understand that if you change a system property that has this marked as false, it will do a cache.do on the system, probably pretty risky. So keep it with the default unless you are uh, of exquisite knowledge about what caching does. The private property dictates whether or not value changes of the sys property get captured in update sets and migrate between instances. Also, it will keep this value if you're cloning down. So if you have various system properties that must be different, depending on the instance that you're working on, then you want to mark those sys properties as private. The next two are also awesome. They are what we talked about before, where you can distribute the admin to other roles. So I want the thing admins to be able to read this sys property, and I want them to write this sys property, because as soon as I deploy this app, it's all on the thing admins. It's nothing to do with me. So now I have a system property called assignment group. It's going to be used in the flow designer. It's a string and it's a value of a sys ID and the things admins can read and write to it. I'm gonna submit that. We're gonna create another one and this one's going to be an escalation group. So that's the value of my escalation group. I'm gonna call this default escalation group. ServiceNow is gonna name it for me with my scoped out prefix. This will be used by UI actions when a thing is escalated. Again, we're ignoring cache. We're not making this private. We gotta make the read and write to the thing admins. And we're going to find one more property, and this one is going to be score.threshold. This will be used in scripts to determine if a thing is above or below our preferred threshold. The default value is going to be 50. I would love for this to be a decimal. Unfortunately, that's not a type that's available to us in sys properties. So I'm just going to leave it as a string. And I'm going to remember if I'm going to do math on it within a script, I've got to do an appropriate conversion. So we're just going to keep these simple simple 50 and string and we got to put the read and write rules in as and once that's done i'm going to submit now we've got three system properties for the things app let's imagine some scenarios where we'd want to do scripting around it now the only reason we've built properties in the first place is so that we can reference them in all of the other service now building blocks specifically in code we're not going to build out any business rules or script includes or workflows or anything like that we're just going to run scripts using the property lookups rather than the hard-coded values. In the first scenario we're imagining, I want to know what the default assignment group is for things because it could have changed a hundred times since we created that property. Let's go check. So I'm going to create a variable called prop and this variable is going to be defined as a function that's the gs.getProperty. gs.getProperty takes the name of a property and returns you the value. Really easy. So we're going to GS info out the raw value of the property. And then we're going to use a function to look up the group, feeding it the sys ID from that property and see what happens. So we're going to run this script. So we're going to run this script and we see the raw value of the property is that sys ID and the group name is things processing. Exactly what I expected. So you can imagine if you're in some kind of script that's auto assigning to the default group. There you go. Okay, for the second test, I want you to see here that I've got things, none of them have an assignment group. I would love to run a fixed script that assigns all those back to the default assignment group, whatever that might be. So again, I've got a script up here. What it's gonna do is you can define a variable called default group. Default is gonna be gs.getProperty, the value of the property that is the default.assignment group. Then we're gonna do a glide record looking up to the things table. We're gonna add a not null query on the assignment group. And then we are going to set the value of the assignment group equal to a default group. What's default group? The lookup to the property that we just defined. Then we're gonna do a things.update multiple and we're gonna see what happens. Run the script. Then I'm gonna go to my things table and I'm gonna refresh. And we see that now all the things are assigned 
to the default group that we defined. Okay, last test. We define that score threshold as 50, and we know that we've got a bunch of things. Some are below 50, some are 50 and above, and what we are going to test for is whether it's below or above the threshold. So we've got a variable of threshold that is defined as the GS property that we've got defined, and we are defining a variable called things. It's a lookup to the things table, and while things.next, it's gonna determine if the things score is greater than or equal to the threshold, if so, it's gonna GS info that the thing's number is above the threshold. Otherwise, it's gonna say it's below the threshold. So let's run this script and see what happens. And we see that there's two below the threshold and three that are above the threshold. So again, if you wanna have different pathing in your logic, depending on a value that somebody determines arbitrarily, then sys properties are for you. So now we've seen how to build them and we've seen how to utilize them. Let's wrap it up by distributing that admin load onto the process owner. So this thing process is built for a certain person and I want that person to be able to change the properties. Right now, what we're gonna do is create what's called a system property category. If you look at how email is defined, you see these kind of sections, incident closure properties, incident reopen properties, copy incident and create child incident properties. That's what we are going to build. Then we're gonna load them into this system properties underscore UI dot do. So you will find sys property categories under the sys properties menu in your navigator bar in the categories link. So we're gonna click that and we're gonna click new and we're gonna call this thing properties. I like to call this things properties to administer. And we are going to save this. And so now it's basically just a section. What we need to do is populate it with properties. So we've got this related list for properties. We can click edit. I'm gonna look for my X underscore 1946, cause that's my scope name. And there we go, things default. There we got assignment group, escalation group, score threshold. Let's move that over, save it. So now we've got this section just waiting to be rendered on that page. So we've got to invoke that page. Let's do it from our modules list. So I'm gonna to go to my things module and I'm gonna edit that. And we wanna make a new module. And we're gonna call this properties. And we're gonna block that off just for the admin. And the link type, this is really important, is gonna be a URL from arguments. It's gonna look complicated, but I'm gonna break it down nice and simple for everybody, okay? So we just think about these as three separate things. It is going to call this page that already exists called system properties UI.do. Okay, that's the interface it's gonna call. And we are going to give it a title. So whenever the page comes up, what do we want the title to be? We're just gonna call it properties, real simple. And then we need to call a sysparm category that's gonna be the set of properties that we put into that page. And what did we just finish defining? We just, defined, just finished defining a system properties category. So we're gonna take that category, things properties, and that's what we're gonna do. It's just gonna call this URL, plug in all those bits, and it's gonna return the page nice and easy for us. So we're gonna hit submit on that. So here's the true test. I'm gonna go impersonate a thing admin and uh, the person who owns this app his name is Robert Lobla his friends call him Bob so let's just impersonate Bob Lobla and we're gonna go to our things menu and we see a thing called properties let's click that and there's our properties list so what we're gonna do is change the default assignment group so maybe we don't want it going to the things processing group maybe we've moved that all over to the service desk now so I'm gonna put in the sys ID of the service desk I'm gonna hit save let me unimpersonate, say goodbye to blah, blah, blah. Then we're gonna run that script again that asked us what the default assignment group is. So let's run the script. And we see that the sys ID has changed and it's also aiming at the service desk. So blah, 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 who is not a system admin, successfully changed properties that makes the app work differently. Okay, so remember the three important things. A system property changes the way an application can work. It also enables us to work in scripts without hard coding values. And lastly, it allows us to distribute that administrative load to other people so long as we define those properties with the appropriate read and write roles. Hope you got some value out of this one. Keep your eyes peeled. I'll put a link right up here. I am going to go to my Go With The Flow series and I'm gonna create a flow that capitalizes on both the getting and the setting of system properties. Looking forward to seeing you on that one. If you're a ServiceNow expert looking for better opportunities, but maybe your resume or LinkedIn profile isn't doing you justice, 
reach out to me via LinkedIn or the email pictured here as I offer both career coaching and recruitment services. And if you're a ServiceNow customer or partner, you heard that right. Robert Fedoric now does ServiceNow recruiting. With a 1,500 subscriber YouTube channel and mailing list and thousands of LinkedIn followers, let's make sure your open positions get first go at the prodigious pool of ServiceNow resources. Reach out via the emailed picture here.